My life has been changed by a series of encounters. I'm guessing a lot of you could say the same thing. I'm guessing that a lot of you watching this video would be able to look back on your life and recognize a moment where you met a person who maybe down the line or maybe right there in that moment changed your life or changed the direction of your life in a, in a fairly drastic way. Maybe it was an unlikely person. Maybe this person was someone you never in a million years would have imagined would have changed the course of your life, helped you to become the person that you are today, and helped you to grow closer in your relationship with God. Maybe this was someone you've known your whole life, but there was this moment where they offered you an invitation. They reached out to you in a deeper way, and that completely changed the course of your life. I know that that's true for me. I know that the encounters that I've had with people in my life have made me the person that I am today and have made the, my relationship with God what it is today also. Obviously, the Lord was at work through them. Obviously, I had to cooperate with their invitation, but it was their initial reaching out, their initial invitation to me and their recognition of my my value, my dignity, and desiring to get to know me as a person, that really truly has changed the course of my life forever. I want to suggest and to remind each of you today that you have the power to offer that life-changing invitation to someone in your life. This is a three-part series called The Three Steps of a Life-Changing Invitation. Offering an invitation to someone is not the easiest thing. It's not the most comfortable thing we can do. It's very difficult for a lot of us to offer an invitation because it requires us to go outside of our comfort zone. It requires us to risk something. It requires us to go beyond the, the walls of our own person and risk being let down, risk not getting through to someone. Um, there, there's a lot of risk involved and it takes a lot of courage. So this three-part series is a series of encouragement and inspiration for all of us, myself included, to go out and to offer an invitation to someone that might change their life forever. The first, series, the first in this series of videos is called The Courage to Reach Out because every invitation begins with that initial moment of reaching out to someone. This might be someone that we meet in the supermarket. It might be someone we meet on the streets or in the store, but it also might be someone that we've known our entire lives, but never really taken the initiative to get to know very well, never taken the initiative to have a real deep conversation with. This might be someone you meet tomorrow. It might be someone you met the day that you were born. But for all of us, there's someone in our lives or someone who might show up in our lives very soon, who needs us to reach out to them because they desire someone to recognize their dignity, because they need hope, because they've lost their faith and they don't know where to rediscover it, because they need community and they're longing for someone to see their own value and dignity. There's someone in each of our lives that we need to reach out to. Again, this idea of reaching out can be really, really intimidating. I'm a shy person at heart. It's my nature to be um, introverted. Um, it's not easy for me to reach out to others, but I've noticed and I've learned over, especially the past couple of years of my life, that reaching out to another person is the most powerful way that God can work through us and that he gives us all of the courage and all of the tools that we need in order to do that. So I'd like to share a few ideas of inspiration and encouragement and a few things that I've learned about how to reach out to others in a uh, life-changing way, in a meaningful way, and also where we can find that courage to reach out. Um, the first thing I would say is that this always involves a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Again, this idea of reaching out to another person and inviting them to something greater, inviting them to encounter God, inviting them to a relationship with God, this always is the work of the Holy Spirit. We are simply the vessels that the Holy Spirit works through. And for me, that's a really comforting thing to know that it's not all my own power that is at work here. 
but it's also not even my own initiative. The Holy Spirit is always the one who is calling us. The Holy Spirit is always the one who is making a way for us. He's always the one opening up the opportunities. So I would encourage you each day to begin the day in prayer saying, Holy Spirit, how do you want to work through me today? Who do you want me to reach out to? And then in the moment, listen to the Holy Spirit. Ask him when you encounter someone, Holy Spirit, how do you want me to reach out to them? Do you want me to have a conversation? Do you want me to try to invite them deeper into a relationship with you? How do you want me to reach out? And he will be the one to inspire. He will be the one to lead. He will be the one to give you the words and he will be the one to give you courage. Secondly, and along those same lines, definitely remember that taking the first step is just a first step. Reaching out is just the first step. Again, this is a three-part series. Reaching out, the courage to reach out initially is only the first step. Don't worry about the whole big picture. You don't have to worry about having all of the answers to every question they might ask you. You don't have to know exactly where you're going to invite them in the future. You don't have to plan out the entire progression of the relationship with this person. All the Holy Spirit asks in that moment is for you to be obedient and faithful in that moment. Simply trust him, listen to what he is asking you to say, listen to what he is asking you to do, and then just be faithful and let him lead. Reaching out like this, reaching out to another person and inviting them to relationship with you so that you can invite them to a relationship with God, this is a huge lesson in trust. This has probably been the way that I have grown in trust the most over the past couple of years is learning to trust that the Holy Spirit is going to lead me and guide me and give me the courage and the words to reach out to another person to invite them deeper. You don't need a full plan. You don't need all the answers. The second thing, or the, the third thing that I'd like to mention is actually from scripture. It's a, it's a story from scripture that is very powerful when it comes to this idea of invitation and remembering to trust the Lord and also remembering that this reaching out step, this first step is only the first step. There's a story in Mark's gospel about a sower who goes out to sow seed. We're probably all very familiar with this story. Some seed falls on good ground, some seed falls on rocky ground, some seed falls amidst the thorns and doesn't end up bearing much fruit. The Lord is the sower but we can also become the sower that he works through at times. We are the ones sowing seeds, but he sows them through us. He is also the one who waters them. He is also the one who prepares the soil. We have great responsibility as Christians, as followers of Christ, but we don't have all of the power to make all of the fruit grow. That is the Lord's. The Lord's is the power to make the fruit grow. All we can do is obey and be faithful and sow the seeds. In Mark's gospel, it says, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell upon the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it produced no grain. And some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit. It came up and yielded thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. He added, whoever his, has ears ought to hear. And when he was alone, those present along with the twelve questioned him about the parables. Jesus answered them, the mystery of the kingdom of God has been granted to you. But to those outside, everything comes in parables, so that they may look but not, and see but not perceive, and hear and listen but not understand, in order that they may not be converted and be forgiven. Jesus said to them, Do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand any of the parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones on the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear, Satan comes at once and takes away the word sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground who, 
when they hear the word, receive it at once with joy. But they have no root, and they last only for a time. But when tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Those sown among thorns are another sort. They are people who hear the word, but worldly anxiety, the lure of riches, and the craving for other things intrude and choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But those sown on rich soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit 30 and 60 and a hundredfold. We all have people in our lives who are cultivating different types of soil in their hearts right now. We have people in our lives who are so hungry for the word and have cultivated such good soil that when we get when we share the word with them, when we reach out to them, it will fall on good soil and it will bear a lot of fruit. But we also have people who are overcome by the anxieties of the world. We also have people in our lives who have thorns in their hearts of sin that choke out the word that we might share with them. Our initial invitation, our initial attempt to reach out, it won't always bear fruit. And that's a really hard reality that, at least personally, I've had to come to understand. God is the one who, who waters the seeds that we sow. We have to trust him that as long as we are faithful, as long as we take the opportunities that are given to us to share the word of the Lord, but also just to reach out and develop a relationship, that he will take that relationship wherever he desires to take it that that fruit will grow if he desires it to grow and if that person is open. We can only be faithful and reach out. One thing I do wanna add at this point is that this is not always uh, a total stranger that we're talking about. This might be someone in your own home that you're called to reach out to. This might be a sibling that you've lost touch with. This might be a cousin that you grew up with but never really got into a, a deep relationship of faith with. I know for myself, it can be even harder to reach out to members of my own family than it can to people that I work with or people that I encounter in our parish. I know just recently I reached out to a family member of mine who I have never really had real deep, real deep conversations about faith with. Our conversation didn't start out about faith. We simply had a conversation about something else and that we ended up getting into a bit of an argument about. In the midst of that conversation, I felt a calling by the Holy Spirit to ask her about her faith life because she seemed to me to be extremely anxious. And I knew that if she really had that relationship with Jesus, that that would be a different, she would have a different experience. She wouldn't be experiencing all of that anxiety. As we talked, I realized that she really had lost her faith. But we had had a conversation just then an open conversation about faith that we had never had before in the past. And the reason we were able to have that was because I listened to the Holy Spirit and I took a risk. I took a risk that she might shut me out. She might not answer my question. She might not end up listening to what I had to say. But I took that first step. I took that risk and I trusted the Holy Spirit. And our conversation ended relatively well. I'm still praying for her. I don't really know what kind of fruit the Holy Spirit is going to grow out of our conversation, but I know deep down that I was faithful. I know deep down that the Holy Spirit wanted me to ask that question. He wanted me to reach out and take that first step. So now I just have to pray and continue the relationship with her, but pray that the Holy Spirit grows that fruit, that he produces fruit from the faithfulness that I showed towards him. Finally, I wanted to comment on the saint of the day today. May 26th, the date that this video is being recorded, is the Feast of St. Philip Neri. He was a saint back in the 1500s. He lived in Rome, and he was known for his great joy. He would simply stand in the middle of the street, on the street corners in Rome, and tell jokes, and just get to know people and bring them joy. And that was the way that he evangelized. He didn't jump directly to telling them about Jesus. He didn't jump directly to quoting scripture to them. He simply first developed a relationship with them through joy. Those were the seeds that he sowed. And because of his faithfulness, because of those seeds that he sowed, 
God produced abundant fruit in Rome through him. We can all do the same. Yes, our ultimate goal is the salvation of the souls of those that we encounter. Our ultimate goal is telling them about Jesus, leading them to Jesus. But joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. If we simply share joy with others, that might be that initial reaching out moment that draws them in so that later on we can introduce them to the person of Jesus. So I encourage you today to remember four things. First, listen to the Holy Spirit. Second, remember that you don't need to have all the answers or, or know the whole picture. Third, remember that we only sow seeds. God is the one who waters them and who brings about fruit. We only need to sow initial seeds and be faithful to what God is asking us to do. And fourth, it could just be your joy that draws others in, that invites them in, so that later on that fruit can grow. So cultivate joy today and reach out to others today. If during this video, you've been thinking about someone in your life who really could use that invitation, who could really use an invitation into a deeper relationship with Christ in the church, I'd like to offer you an opportunity. I'd like to offer you the opportunity to invite them to take part in what is called the search. The search is an awesome video series through the Augustine Institute on form.org. It's full of powerful stories, powerful images, powerful speakers, and powerful truth for everyone at every stage in their faith journey. It gives conviction to the doubtful. It can inspire those who are already faithful. It can spark faith in those who really have never encountered the person of Jesus Christ or his church before. If there is someone in your life who's struggling, if you're struggling, if there's someone who you want to invite deeper into a relationship with Christ, but you don't really know how to start that relationship off, I invite you to take that first step and reach out. Just develop that relationship with them. Know that it might be that same day that you're able to invite them to the search or to something deeper, but it also might take another week. It might take another month. It might take a year. It might take five years. It might take almost a whole lifetime, but all you can do is reach out. If there's a person that you already have a relationship with, a good relationship of trust with, who you would like to invite to a deeper point in their relationship with Christ, invite them to the search. The search is meeting here at St. Wendell and Parish on Wednesdays this summer, beginning on June 16th. There's an option in the morning uh, for a session in the morning from 10 until 11.30 and an option in the evening from 6.30 until 8.00. Parents, if you are in need of childcare, we're willing to provide that as long as you let us know ahead of time so that you can fully engage in these videos and in the conversation with others. There's a sign up link that is attached to this video, whether you are on YouTube or Facebook or your email. If you or someone you know are interested, please sign up with that link. There's no commitment to being part of the entire series. If you have a friend who is not really completely sure, bring them to the first session. Let them experience the encounter that hopefully they will have through the beauty and the truth in these videos and through conversation with others in the community. But then after that, just simply invite them again. All you can do is be faithful. So once again, I leave you with this encouragement to reach out to be faithful to wherever the Holy Spirit is calling you. And as Pope John Paul II says, be not afraid. God bless you.